I'd like to do a more complicated example of a free body diagram. So let's say that we have a large object, let's say a box, that is sitting on the ground. And maybe we have two people who are trying to move the box. So I'm going to have one person like this, um, trying to push on the box um, this direction. And I'm going to have another person who is pulling on a rope kind of like this. Okay, so I'm going to name the two people so I have some subscripts to use for them. Let's say that this person is um, Cindy and this person is David. Okay, so um, one other um, thing that's going to be going on in this problem is even though we have two people trying to move the box, um, the box doesn't move. Okay, so it must be very heavy for that to be the case. Okay, so now let's draw a free body diagram for the box. All right, so we start with the title, box. Um, and then draw the box as a dot. And I always like to start with whatever's easiest. So um, in this case, we know the box is very heavy, so it's going to have a weight. So gravitational force on the box by the Earth. Um, furthermore, it's not going to be falling through the floor, so there must be a normal force on the box by the floor. Okay, um, what else is going on? Well, we know that Cindy is pushing the box to the right, so I'm going to do a force um, from Cindy on the box. Well, what type of force? Well, it's an ordinary pushing force. So this is going to be a normal force on the box by Cindy. Okay. Um, David is pulling on the box, so that's going to be a tension force, and he's pulling to the right. So I'm going to have a force that's to the right as well. Um, the way I like to do that is just kind of offset a little bit, so still starting on the dot, but um, I want to be able to see both forces. If necessary, you can make your dot bigger so that both of the forces can be starting on the dot. Um, so um, this is a tension force, and the tension force is on the box. Um, and then to figure out what is exerting the force, you might say, all right, well, David is exerting the force. But remember, tension is a contact force. So David is not actually in contact with the box. Um, what is in contact with the box is the rope. So it's actually a tension force on the box by the rope. Okay, and we'll come back to this a little later to see why that is a useful distinction to make. Um, okay, so is that it? Are we done? Well, we're not quite done yet because we know the box doesn't move. And as I've drawn this free body diagram so far, um, there's a net force to the right. So in order for the box to not um, have any net force on it, there must be some other force this direction that cancels out those others. And based on the context, we can tell it really must be friction. There isn't much else that it could be. So a friction force on the box by the floor. Okay, so now this is the completed free body diagram. We have um, five different forces on this box at the same time. Notice we have two different normal forces here. That's perfectly fine. We can have multiple forces of the same type. Um, if you imagine, we could have several strings tied to a box and we could have many different tensions at the same time. Um, you could even imagine doing a problem in space where you have a bunch of asteroids. Maybe there's multiple gravitational forces at the same time. Or you could consider the force that the moon is exerting on you um, and as well as the force the Earth is exerting. So um, it's totally fine to have multiple forces of the same type in the same problem. Okay, so I promised to come back to the tension. Um, I said that the tension force is on the box by the rope rather than being by David. And the reason for that is because we could also draw a free body diagram for the rope if we wanted. And then this is a little simpler. So here's my rope. Um, now, David is pulling the rope to the right. David's actually in contact with the rope, so that's fine. So we have a tension force. Um, let me actually make it a little shorter. So tension force on the rope by David. And there's a tension force um, on the rope by the box. Okay. We know that because the rope isn't moving either, so the rope must be in equilibrium. And now notice what's going on here. I have two different forces on two different diagrams, a tension force on the rope by the box, and a tension force on the box by the rope. Those are a Newton's third law pair, so I have to draw those with the same magnitudes in opposite directions. That's what Newton's third law tells us. So a Newton's third law pair can never appear on one diagram. It's always going to appear on two different diagrams because the forces are on two different objects. Also notice that if I go around the free body diagram for the box, all the forces are on the box. Okay, they have to be, that's what the free body diagram is for. So that's another way that you can check that your diagram um, is correct. Um, so in a problem like this, some forces might not be stated explicitly, like friction we had to figure out was there. The normal force on the box by the floor we had to figure out was there because the box wasn't falling through the floor. Um, some forces are stated explicitly, like the ones that Cindy is um, exerting and the one that David is exerting, but you may have to think about what other forces must be present for a situation to work out.